I'm extremely passionate about this stuff. Okay, I'm going to try to keep in a small window. Okay, because there's probably 10,000 different topics, one-hour workshops I can do on all this stuff. Okay, um, we're going to try to answer all your questions at the end. So that's why I give you guys a note sheet. If you guys run out of notes, there's a backside. If you run out of that, let me know. I'll get you another one. Okay. Um, so yeah, let's. What do you guys think this is going to be about? The big secret? You think I got a big secret how to lose weight? <laughs> no, you've been seeing them on all those magazines, right? On the newest secret, right? It's a magic pill out there. All right, so let's get into it here. So what's your objective? Okay. What's your goal, right? To lose 15 pounds, to avoid disease, increase strength, speed, performance, capacity, function, right? You want to jump higher? You want to run five miles? What is it? Um, you know, the one I, I would hope you guys say is free, you know, optimal health. But I know that's not in everyone's plan, right? Bless you. So what is optimal health? Improved function, right? Those are the cholesterol, uh, blood pressure numbers, right? The weight, uh, BMI, which, you know, we'll get into that uh, here in a second. But, or increased performance, right? So do you want to perform better daily? Right? It's not, you don't have to be some athlete to have, be perform, right? You can be a human being and perform still throughout your day. Does that make sense? Okay. And a healthy appearance, right? We all want to look better, right? Right? Let's be honest, you know, maybe it's, you know, look better naked. Right? Who doesn't, right? It's okay. You can, you can admit to it. All right? So healthy is the new sexy, right? Is it skinny, the new sexy, or healthy, the new sexy? Oh, Right? So we're out, you know, you guys are probably at the mall, right? You guys have all been to the mall, right? Skinny jeans, right? Guys and girls, right? Isn't it pretty sad, though? That's what the younger generations come up with, though. Right? Skinny jeans. Right? It's pretty bad that that's where their mindset is setting. Well, i got to be skinny, right? Because if I can fit in these jeans, I'll be better. Right? So that's scary to think about that's where our generation is going. So the brutal facts, the present obesity epidemic is both troubling and informative because adiposity, extra fat, is largely caused by poor diet, ex excess calories, and inadequate physical activity, emphasis on more downstream risk factors such as hypertension, dyslipidemia, and diabetes address neither the root causes of obesity nor its full cardiovascular consequences. That's in the Journal of Circulation, one of the hardest journals to get published in. That's serious stuff that people in that area are already figuring out that, hey, the problems that are leading to these big illnesses, right, cancer, diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, are coming from overweight. Right? Here's another one. An abundance of evidence suggests that lifestyle factors, including exposure to chemical carcinogens, physical inactivity, and diet play major roles in developing common cancers. The current human diet contains a variety of mutagens and carcinogens that lead to initiation of cancer and other chronic illness or diseases. Okay, that's in the Journal of Physiology. The prevalence of overweight in U.S. adults has increased dramatically during the past 30 years, with type 2 diabetes representing what is perhaps the most serious obesity-related consequence. Nearly 90% of individuals with type 2 diabetes are overweight. That's incredible. Okay, obesity, like we just talked about, downstream conditions, right? Right? Just being overweight is just, that's not where it stops. Okay, it leads to serious things, heart disease, diabetes, cancer. Okay, fat is sick. Okay, we're going we're gonna to get to some serious subjects tonight. I want you guys to be comfortable with them. Okay, understand that when we're overweight, that's not just, oh, well, you know, it's, it's in the genes, or I got this issue, I got that issue, right? It's your body saying that, hey, there's something not right here. What we're either not doing, what we're taking or not taking, what we're putting in our mouths, or other things is leading to us not being healthy. So would you guys agree with me that what we're doing is not working? Right? Nod your head, yes. Let me know you're there. It's not hard enough, right? <laughs> What's that? Not hard enough. It's working, but not hard enough. Exactly. So fat's a symptom, would you agree? Right? Do you think it's a cause or do you think it's a symptom, you know? What's a headache, right? It's a symptom, right? So would you 
So fat's a symptom, right? So normal people, not you guys, because you guys get adjusted, so you guys don't have headaches, right? When you get a headache, what do most people do? Right? It goes away, but you guys all know it doesn't, you know, it doesn't go away, right? That's not the problem. Your body's not needing that one. Advil, right? Fat's the same way. Would you just starve yourself? Like, well, I'll just get the skinnier that way, right? So it's not, obviously not going to take care of the issue. So symptoms are body signals. Your body's trying to ask for help. Okay? You guys know fat is a what? Symptom. There we go. So you're gonna learn, we're going to go over hormones tonight. Okay? Who knows that word? Who's heard of it? Raise your hand. Who doesn't understand hormones? Raise your hand. Who wants to understand hormones? Raise your hand. All right. We're going to keep it in a narrow window. I promise I won't get too nerdy on you tonight. Okay, adiposity, extra body fat, is a symptom of chronic hormone imbalance. Hormones and enzymes regulate fat storage. You must regain hormone balance through specific lifestyle changes and choices that will directly impact hormone balance if you ever wish to conquer your weight or health issues. Does that make sense? What do you know about your hormones? Anybody? Go ahead. They what do you know go about? up and down. They go up, they go up and down. down. Roller coasters, right? Yeah. Do you think that's just the way you are? Well, it can it can be due to for women. Yeah. Due to you know female issues yeah. or estrogen issues. Mm -hmm. That's Absolutely. part of it. Do you think we can control our hormones to an extent? Yeah. You think your your body hates you and just wants you to have bad hormones? No. Okay. <laughs> I hope not. Because everybody knows your body's what. Smart? All right, so the perfect hormone storm. Toxic deficient food choices, right? Just go down what? Superior Street there, you're going to hit what? Exactly. Whole bunch of them, right? Right across the street from each other. It's pretty easy, right? They don't claim to be the best food, they claim to be the what? Fast food, right? Yeah. Energy imbalance, sedentary lifestyle. We're sitting more than we have ever. You think our ancestors way back in the wood day were sitting down a lot? No? Work all the time. Go ahead. You know, a lot, a lot of times on TV shows they'll say you'll need to take a seat for this or you need to relax. And I'm like, how many times are you going to sit down and relax? Yeah, exactly. And ex <laughs> excessive calories. All right, that's a huge one, right? Okay. And then add on to chronic social stress. Anybody have stress in their life? Okay. Lack of sleep and chronic exhaustion. Who has that? Start to add up a little bit. Okay, thank you. All right, so let's talk about how to regain the control of your hormones. Food quality, right? The types of food that we're putting in our bodies. The quantity of food. Okay, food rhythms. When do we eat? Okay, when's the best time to eat? Activity levels. Are we sitting around all the time or are we, what are we doing? All right, we get enough activity. Social stress, right? Facebook, right? Social media. All right, you know they got a snooze button, right? How about just turn off the phone? That'd be better, right? Don't have that social stress. And sleep patterns. Who would have thought sleep patterns has anything to do your way? You think so? It does try working, you know, 12-hour night shift. Yeah. Years. yeah. Well, well, we'll talk later on the night shift. I got, a, I got something for you. So let's talk about top five dieting lies. Number one, weight problems run in my family. Who's heard it? Oh, yeah. Who's even said it? Be honest here. It's all right, okay. Just eat less and you lose weight. Lose weight. I'll just starve, right? I just won't eat that. I'm not going to skip breakfast. No big deal. I'll just work it off at the gym. Who's a workout machine and says, ah, now I can go eat like a king? Right? I just walked that whole mile. I just walked to the post office. I'm going to eat a, I'm gonna eat a big old buffet. Calories are calories, right? It's all the same stuff. Twinkies and broccoli. doesn't matter. All right. And sleep has nothing to do with it, I promise. So let's talk about number one, weight problems running my family. It's a big one. All right? When we hear weight problems running in my family, what do we think about? We're all doing the same thing. Yeah. 
Oh, I have a thyroid issue. Or, well, or right? Or, you know, my, my parents have always been big. I'm always big, right? So genes and body composition, okay? Genes, <laughs> environment, lifestyle. We're going to talk about body composition, okay? So body composition is going to fall right in the middle here, okay? So how you're made up, what your body contains, right? So are we a lot of fat, are we a lot of muscle, what are we? Okay, have the genes changed? Do your genes change? They don't? You sure? They always stay the same? Mom and dad gave them to you? Okay. What about your environment? You think that changes? Yes. Yeah. What about lifestyle? Yes. Yeah. It's pretty important. So let's look at the trends. We're going to go all the way back to 1990. All the way back. Are you kidding me? That was like 100 years ago, right? <laughs> Okay, look at we're pretty healthy, right? What's going on? The obesity trends. Let me go to 1998. Get closer. All right, look at Michigan. They're not looking good for Michigan. And then 2006. So what's changing, right? We know the genes aren't changing, right? Do you think our environments are changing? Do you think our lifestyles are changing? Or people's genes are actually changing? So yeah, what changed, right? The genes didn't change. You guys just told me your environment changes and lifestyle changes. Eat, move, and think. Are we doing more of those or less of those? Are we eating more or less? Right. What about moving? Moving more or less? And thinking, what are we doing? Is life unnaturally stressful these days? Right. Environment, relationships, strategies, and choices all affect how we gain weight or lose weight or gain muscle lose muscle. Whatever you guys' goals are, you got to know what they are. So healthy comes in all shapes and sizes, right? Right? People are NBA, right? Those guys are giants. NFL players, right? They're just born that way, right? Those are those genes they got, right? Those genes didn't change, right? But, you know, you could be built like one of them, okay? You could have a little fluff on the side, or you could just be ripped, okay? You know those people that can just eat, 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 right? They never gain weight. Do you think that's doing anything to their organs, though? Right? Do you think, like, oh, wow, well, this person can eat whatever they want and still have six pack? Do you think it's affecting inside at all? The effect in, like, the pancreas that deals with the blood sugar, mm -hmm. the gallbladder, the stomach, the intestines. Do you think that can be affected just because they can eat whatever they want? So 15 pounds healthier, here we go. Body composition, right? You gotta know what's going in and coming out to have that body composition. Amount of lean tissue and fatty tissue, okay? Optimal ranges, one we're gonna be a little bit higher, God bless, right? God knows what he was doing, he did it the right way, right? So optimal ranges, I don't like to get in these numbers because we can go either way on them. Guys, it's, you know, 8% 8, 8 all the way up to 15%, women 15 to, 25, 26 is what optimal is. Okay, but you have to know what your optimal is, right? I'm not going to put that number on you, and I don't really want to go down that route, but because we can have a whole other hour. Biomarkers, right? The scale. I'm going to have a scale at home. You guys like it? What does it tell you? Oh, for weight. Is it frustrating? Look, I just worked out today. I should be losing weight. I'm gaining weight. Right? Exactly, right? So many things. Throw this scale out. Okay, abdominal measurement. Right? Who's, who's tried a bunch of like ab exercises? And you're just like, ah, I'm not getting anywhere on that, right? Body fat uh, percentage, right? That's what we talk about body composition. Big lie number two, just eat less and you'll lose weight. Okay, so if you woke up today and you normally take 20 breaths a minute, right? And you said, I'm just going to get by on 14. What do you think is going to happen? Good luck. Right? You normally do 20, 20 breaths a minute. And you said, I'm going to try to get by on 14. It's not going to be sustainable, right? Metabolism, metabolism changes, right? Metabolism, right? We want to make sure that, you know, our metabolism is staying right up here. So what happens when you stop eating? Survival mode, right? And when we, 
everything shuts down, metabolism shuts down, we go into survival mode, right? We gotta keep that fat, right? So eat less, let me know how that's gonna work out for you. It's not gonna do anything, right? You're gonna get into a roller coaster here, in survival mode, like we just talked about. Short-term torture. So you're not, you're eating less, and you're still starving, all right? And we're not losing weight. So why do it? <clears throat> calories are calories. Like I just said, right? If you eat 2,000 calories, well, let's say your diet consists of 2,000 calories, right? And you're like, well, I'm gonna eat 2,000 calories of broccoli, and I'm gonna eat 2,000 calories of Twinkies. Do you think they're the same? Right, what's different about them? They're 2,000 calories though. Sugar and fat. What's that? Food value. Yes, exactly. So, right, that's what I'm saying, toxic deficient foods, right? How many of you have heard of all the different things out there in your foods, right? We just talked about fast food, right? Who knows how it's made, okay? But it's easy, it's fast. I got stuff to do, I don't have time to make food. It's too hard for me, I got too many kids at home. Okay, so who remembers the food pyramid? Right? <laughs> Absolutely, right? But I mean, let's just go over it, right? Here's that food pyramid that we won't go down there, but the government created, right? All that grain at the bottom, right? Got to get your grains in. It's the healthy stuff there. Then you got the fruit, uh, veggies and fruits, milk squeaked in there, meat, meat substitutes. Thank God they threw those in there because we all need those. And then the fats, oils, and sweets, and I believe that's a Hershey bar up top, right? That's the key to health right there, would you say? <laughs> the sanity, maybe. But. Right? That's what, I mean, obesity is the, the linchpin to our chronic disease. Okay, it's leading us in that direction. Okay? How about flipping that upside down with the veggies and fruits fall to the bottom where we need most? Okay, so let's look at the wild hunter and gatherer, right? They consist of high carbohydrates, right? The good stuff, the good carbs, uh, which we'll talk about a little bit later. You guys might have seen your packs. Uh, low, moderate, good, good fat, high protein, no refined foods, no dairy, no sugar, right? If we go way back then, caveman style, right? They had to what? Hunt for their food. Or are they sitting in the fields, right? Crushing the barley, crushing the wheat, get some bread. Probably out hunting, right? Exhausting energy, right? What are we doing now? High refined carbs, right? French fries, you know, white breads, rice, all that stuff. Low fat, low protein, no red meat, sugary foods, sugars and everything, artificial sweeteners and everything. Okay? So everything in moderation, right? Who's heard that? Mm -hmm. I'm just I'm gonna have a little bit, right? Just, you know, that Ben and Jerry's up there, it's just like Ben and Jerry does not belong. Yeah, ben or Jerry. Jerry. <laughs> in the context of tonight. Right? We want to, you know, in the context of tonight. Kind of well, that's good. No, I don't. Yeah, it's poor food quality fails, right? Toxic choices, deficient choices, unbalanced choices, right? Do you think what you put into your body, right, affects your hormones? Does it go up? Does it go down? Does it go up? Does it go down? Right? It's the most devastating when your hormones are out of control. Because you don't know what you can do. If you think you got them under control, then guess what? You don't. All right. So I'm not going to go into these too much, but there's a couple I'm going to go over. So hormonal impact, insulin, glucagon, and cortisol. The two big ones I want you to know, insulin and cortisol. Okay, who's heard of those? So when you think insulin, I want you to think fat storage hormone. What do you guys going to think of? Exactly. So elevated insulin locks you into fat storage mode. Okay, remember that. Insulin's not a bad thing, but it does throw us out of whack. Okay, so food choices, sugars. I know I had to go there, right? Sugars, insulin. Right? So sugars, refined carbs, fast carbs, dairy. Who doesn't love their milk, their cheese, their yogurt? <laughs> right? Who eats yogurt? Why do, you t why do you eat yogurt? Do you like it? Do you do health benefits for it? I think so, but I'm eating coconut yogurt now. Yeah. What do you think is in yogurt? Why do you take 
yogurt. Because it's healthy, because of what, probiotics? Yeah. Oh, there's good source, right? Yeah. You ever see how much sugar's in that? How many servings? Right? 10 plus grams? Okay, a lot of those probiotics will get burned up in your stomach acid, so you're not really getting any of that. Isn't that frustrating? But they don't tell you that, because they hang on to that. They say, well, they got probiotics. Well, there is probiotics, but they're not doing anything for your body. And guess what it did in turn? Locked you into fat storage, right? So when you're eating that yogurt, you think you're doing the right thing, so there's some granola in it, right? Grains, fast carbs. What's that doing even more? Fat storage mode. Right. All right, energy imbalance. Excess calories. Too many calories, right? Overeating. I right? just, you know, how many do you know that eats till they're full? All right, does that make sense? I'm just going to eat till I'm full, right? The sedentary light living, all right? I'm moving, right? How many sit down a lot? Be honest. It's okay. <laughs> right? I, you can't quit your jobs. You can't quit your jobs. I get that. But we're sitting more than ever. Okay. So let's let's get a little nerdy here. I promise we won't be long. So who's sort of the glycemic index? Right? How your body handles food, how it handles carbs. Okay? So on the left there, you've got glucose, sugar. Okay? Plain and simple there. And then you got lentils. Okay? It's just what they... Uh, these two graphs wanted to show them. Okay, so we're looking at the glucose when it goes in your body. Okay, blood sugar level goes way up, then comes way back down. Okay, lentils. Okay, it's pretty healthy, right? Okay, you see, it only has a 30% effect on your blood sugar level. So when we eat sugar, what does it do? Okay, and then when we eat something healthy, what does it do? Just a little bit, right? So. Who has a 9 a.m. crash at work? Morning crash, right? Got to get more coffee, right? Well, what do we eat for breakfast? Right? Do we have cereal, milk, right? Yogurt, granola, apples, oranges. We'll get into it here. There we go. High glycemic foods, right? Rice checks, corn flakes, pretzels, rice crispy cereal, rice cakes, rye bread, waffles. Total, total cereal. I thought it was supposed to be healthy for you. Right? It's got all the things in there, <laughs> right? Graham crackers, Cheerios, bagels. Right? You throw some cream cheese on there, healthy fat, right? <laughs> Short grain, white rice, corn chips, white bread, and whole wheat bread. Look at that one. How many, how many had whole wheat bread because they thought white bread was bad? Right? Well, you just one point lower, right? Didn't, didn't get much where. So just looking at all this, refined sugars, grains, vegetable oils, and dairy equal about 70% 70, 70 of what we normally do in our food supply. It's crazy, right? Okay, through our diet, okay, the, you know, the industrial area, right, where we've just consumed ourselves with all this stuff. Do you think 10 million years ago they had this food? They just had meat, berries. Right? A few other things, right? But they also had to go look for it. We couldn't just drive through the drive through and just have it plopped in our lap. <laughs> All right? So like I said, a lot of these foods comprise of 7% of our energy from the Western diet. Okay? So again, we didn't have the breads, the cereals, all this stuff, the dairy products, the added salt. Right? We won't go there either, but I mean, added salt is going to kill us. Okay? The fatty meats, alcohol. Again, in this context, we're going to stay away from that. All right, so it's an inflection point, okay? So going back to 1960, we've got a, different, we've got a couple different things here. But looking about 1976, 1980, who was born then? Who, remember, who remembers 1976 to 1980? What was going on then? Just tell me anything you remember. The what? Carter Inflation, sir. What? What? Crisis. Carter administration. Carter administration. <laughs> so what happened? I'm trying to figure out what went up. Why did it go up so much? Because people started working more, and we just had to deal with fast food. 1980s fast food was that big then? Yeah, I remember we all the time. Yeah. I should weigh 500 pounds. 
I was born in 85, so you gotta help me out here. Yeah. Twinkies, hoes, you name it. Chips Ahoy, I had it all, all the time, full access. So if we're looking, if we go back to 1850, right? Feedlot produced meats. What, 1880, refined grains, refined vegetable oils, and what, 19 or 1890, hydrogenated oils. Oh, there it is, way up the top. Who knows those? Wow, when, when is that? 19 what? 75, 76? What do you guys think? Who's heard of that? High fructose corn syrup. All right? Can't miss. It's got to be healthy, right? No. Come some corn? <laughs> Corn's healthy, right? There's some different names you guys might hear. They're changing them on you. They're no longer calling the high fructose corn syrup. Isn't that evil? You've never heard of any of those? No, you have. Right? Some of that sounds healthy, right? Fruit, fructose. You can have that. It's got fruit in it. It's got to be healthy. So big nasty word, right? Sugar. It's a bondage, right? Talk to any alcoholic, say no, right? But let's talk about sugar and the, the similarities there. Alcoholics know you can't have alcohol in your life at all, right? Nod your head, right? You would agree with that? So what's the difference between that and sugar? They're both addicting. We can't have them in our lives. So why would you put them in your You know, why would you put them in your homes? They make us feel great. They make you feel great, right? Because uh -huh. they're always there for you, right? That's right. The Ben and Jerry, they're both there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And a bottle of wine. And a bottle of wine. <laughs> right? They're always there for you. Okay? But it's one at the cash register, right? It's not one at the refrigerator. You don't have to purchase them. Someone didn't come in there and plop it right in your freezer. Right? You had that option when you went there. That do I get it or don't I get it? Who understands the grocery store setup? Yeah. Where do you not go? In the middle. Exactly. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? How do we all know that we still do it? Well, I'm just going to go up and down and see what I need. Yeah. I only need a couple things. Walk out of a cart full. Like, what happened? Did I just black out? <laughs> right? Next thing, though, I just have a bunch of things I don't need. Right? Sugar's going to you know, bother our environment, Okay, relationships. Like I said, don't have it in the house since it's a slippery slope, right? I'm just going to have a little bite of it. I've been doing good for 10 weeks. I'm just going to have a bite of that cheesecake. What do you think is going to happen tomorrow? I'm going to have the whole cheesecake. And then I'm going to have two cheesecakes, right? You see how it's going? You had a little bite of it. You're doing so good. Next thing you know, you're going downhill again. All right, seven top, or top seven dieting pitfalls. Drinking calories. It's a huge one. I'm not talking about alcohol. Not tonight. Who makes smoothies? Smoothies are awesome, right? Am I the only one that makes a smoothie? No. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Right? Right? Drinking calories, right? Is there fruit? Fruit's got to be healthy, right? A lot of sugar. A lot of sugar in there, right? Fructose, sugar, okay? Um, you know, instead of putting all of that fruit in there, get more veggies in there. Okay. Or who goes and you know stops at a store or in the mall and they get a green smoothie, right? Green smoothies are oh, the green that gotta be good, right? Can you control what you're actually putting in there though? Or are they doing it? <laughs> right? Too much fruit, right? I'm not I'm not the no like the no fun police, but again, too much fruit. If you're around fruit all the time, right? It can be an issue. Okay, bananas. I know we have bananas at the office, but I'm hoping you guys aren't eating 13 bananas a day. Right? So bananas do have benefits. Fruit does have benefits. But we can't be just slamming them all day. What's that? Yeah, exactly. Dairy. Right? I know. I went there again. Dairy again. Right? Milk, cheese, yogurts. Right? All big things. Granitarians, who loves their breads? Oh, come on, come on. Raise your hands. Right? I like cheese better. Right? 
But think about this. Let's go way back. Or what do you see with little kids, right? Carrying around a bag of Cheerios. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They're already starting out, right? We think we're doing the right things for our kids. Right? We're going to parties or we're going to the carpool, right? Let's give them a bag of Cheerios. They're starting out in an early age already. We're setting them back. We think we're doing the right things. Right? How about post-exercise binging? Who works out? Who goes for a walk? Who likes to lift weights, do whatever, right? And who says, I can eat that big dinner tonight? Right? Because I worked out today, right? I deserve a meal. And that 250 calories that you just burned on the treadmill and went home and had a 260 calorie muffin. Right? Like, I'm over it. I was on the treadmill for an hour, 250 calories. Now I'm eating a muffin that took five minutes. It, I just gained 10 calories. That's not fair, is it? Then it does what? Then you stop working out because it's not fun, right? Skipping breakfast. Who skips breakfast? Everybody eats breakfast here? No? Once in a while. When do you feel like it? What do you have? I usually have like a scrambled egg. There you go. Okay. Because I don't do the very well, so. Good you. But yeah, we'll just take out a meal. No big deal. Guess what happens at lunch and dinner? What happens after dinner? What? You crash or what? Snack more? What happens between lunch and dinner? The appetizer, right? I'll just eat while I'm cooking. I'm going to eat some more and then I'm going to have popcorn for the movie. Right? So snacking. So one of my recommendations, right? So unlimited vegetables. Vegetables are great for you, right? We all agree? Unlimited vegetables, right? Abundant, lean, natural meats. That means grass-fed meat, right? Bison, right? We look, not that processed garbage they have out there, right? The red, you know, they dye a lot of that meat. You guys know they dye a lot of that meat red so it looks fresh, right? Now, who, who doesn't like buying organic grass-fed meat because it's expensive? It's not if you buy it the right way. Exactly, right? But you'd all agree, the organic, the grass-fed, whatever, non-GMO, all that stuff's expensive, right? Yeah. How much does cancer cost? Yeah. Obesity, diabetes, right? I just We just had a gentleman talk about his, uh, had, uh, what is it, diabetes pill, right? Or something, I forget, diabetes or cancer, 100 grand. 100 grand for this pill, right? This 30 pills or something, 100 grand. Isn't that right? And you didn't want to do what six, six, seven dollars worth of meat? Some fruit, nuts, seeds, limited starch, and absolutely no sugar. Cut it out. You guys don't need it. Okay. Yes, it's going to take a while to get used to. It. Go home and look at your cupboards. Right tonight. Do one thing tonight. Go home and throw.